All right, I've been working with my team this week and we have come up with some mobility and strengthening work for the thoracic spine. And we've been drilling down and trying to get down on paper what we use for our clients for these areas, for mobility, for strengthening, for that difficult area of the thoracic spine to get it into three videos for you at home to watch. Now, the first one we're gonna work on is the, in the mobility section. And we're gonna focus first on rotation because rotation on the thoracic spine is its biggest movement, that's its biggest function. So we're gonna focus on that first. Then we're gonna go through some extension of the thoracic spine. And then we're gonna go through some strengthening of that thoracic spine. So let's start off with some rotation. Now, the first one we work on is a lying down, what we call a book opener, because the thoracic spine, we want to get more rotation movement, but because the thoracic spine, because it's part of breathing and ribs, we have to take that into account. So when you do a stretch, a mobility exercise for the thoracic spine, you've got to factor in breathing to help get the range. So what we like to get people doing is to start off with is an easy thoracic rotation in side lying. Now the reason we're doing it in side lying is to lock the hips down, okay? Because I don't want the hips moving. If you do, if you start moving at the hips or the pelvis, the lumbar spine starts moving, you're not gonna isolate that thoracic. So the best way to do that, go into side lying like this. So knees bend at 90 degrees, and you're trying to keep the knees down. Don't let the knees move or separate when you do this exercise. But it's called a book note, or Joe called it a bow and arrow, so just to give you some visual of what you're trying to do. Start off with two hands. So it doesn't matter which side, because you're gonna do both sides. Start off with two hands like that. What you're gonna do is think about sliding back with your hand, which makes you rotate in your thoracic. So you slide back with your hand, and you're slowly going to go backwards and open out, there's the book opening part, or think of a bow and arrow pulling back, as you slowly go backwards with the arm. Now that rotates you through the thoracic, the arm adds on a bit of weight. Now you'll get to the point where you start getting a bit tight, and this is where you need to work on your breathing. And what we've decided that we want people doing is sustaining this hold, and working on, if I talk too much I won't be able to relax, but breathing out and relaxing all my muscles around my ribs, through the back, through the front, all my intercostals. So I'm actually trying to de-stress, if you like, all the muscle tissue through here as I breathe out. And every time I breathe out, I'll be able to sink a little bit more, breathe out again, and try and sing. You finally, hopefully, get to the ground with that arm, and that means you're in full thoracic extension. So it's a passive relaxation stretch. Don't try and pull yourself down the ground, because that's gonna tense you up. So make sure it's not a, you're not trying to get it and pull yourself there, it's actually a relaxing stretch. So you might spend 20, 30 seconds breathing in that position, keeping that knee down, so that's locked here, and just staying in that position and breathing and letting it relax till you finally release into rotation. So that, if you look at that standing up, that is right rotation. So if my right hand is going that way, my thoracic is turning to the right in that position. And of course, then you do it the other way, just flip around. Now, sometimes you'll get some clunks and clicks, like little nips from that, which will help you relax even more. That's fine as long as they don't hurt. So that's a really, really good one to do. And of course, you just flip around the other way once you've done your 20, 30 seconds there, then you slowly go back this way, open out, keep those knees down, slowly get to the point where you're sort of stopping, and then you breathe out and try and extend, relax, pause, breathe in, breathe out, and just keep that going. As long as it doesn't hurt. You don't want sort of, you know, nasty pain with this. The stretch pain's okay, but not that nasty catching back. If you've got sharp jabbing pains through there because of injury, you know, you want to stay away from that. But this is a really nice passive one to do and just keep working on that. So rep range, 20, 30 seconds, whatever it takes to relax and get you as far as you can go. And then doing that three times each side. That's your sort of range, all right? So that book note, that's my first sort of rotation one we want to start working on. 
Once that sort of improves a bit and you want to take that to the next level, then we start doing it in sitting and in standing but with a pole. Now this is a little bit more aggressive, so I recommend you definitely start with that one. Get some of your tightness gone with that and learning how to relax before you start getting into some more sort of aggressive type work. So for this position, you'll need a chair because again, same drill, we're trying to lock down the hips. So when you're rotating, I don't want your hips moving around, okay? Because then you're not rotating through your thoracic, you're just rotating through your legs. So best thing to probably do is start off sitting down. Now, all you need is your broomstick, okay? So unscrew that from your broom, nice light broomstick like that, or a dowel rod if you're in the gym, nothing heavy. Now, if you can get that behind your back and then down on your thoracic like that, that's great. If you don't have the shoulder range of movement for that, if that's too hard, maybe you've got an old shoulder injury or you've been you know, thoracic kyphosis for so long, you just don't have the range, you can do this without the pole, okay? The pole's just gonna give you a little bit more to push and pull. What I mean by that is when I come into this position here, I can push with this hand, okay? So I can push it around. Now you'll be need to be in a chair that doesn't really have a back like that. So you're probably best to just come forward a little bit and make sure those hips don't move. And then you're going around into this position here, okay? So on the edge of the chair, and I want you to start in just mid range, just slow oscillations. Okay, so you're pushing, each time you're pushing the rod. So you're helping your movement left and right. And you'll need to do this for quite a long period of time, you know, maybe one or two minutes, just nice and easy. And you see I'm trying to keep my pelvis locked down, okay? If your chair sort of hits you too much, if, you, if your arms are too high, maybe you need to do it on a bench where you're sort of sitting down. Just the fact of you sitting will help stop you moving because it sort of locks down somewhat of your pelvis, stops you moving. It's a lot better than having to try to do it in standing where you can't control. So if you don't have the greatest control of your pelvis, do it sitting down. Make sure you're getting that down onto your thoracic spine and then rotating in that position. As you get better at it, you can get more aggressive, but make sure stay away from the sharp pains. If you're someone that has got pangs of pain, then this is too aggressive for you, okay? This needs to be, after you've done that sort of book opener one where you've lost your pain a little bit, but you're still stiff. And the stiffness is one of the problems that you've got. So that'll be really good. Other people who, can't have, who don't have the range like that, they don't have the external rotation range, you can just have your elbows wide and just work on this way, okay? The momentum helps you and you still get the same amount of movement. You just can't push and pull with the rod. You don't have the leverage, but it's a great way to do, work on an alternative compared to the dowel rod. Now, once you've got that sitting one done and you've got some moving back in there, you may have done sort of one minute each, you know, one minute, two minutes with that. You might have done two or three sets of that. If you find that that's getting easier, or maybe you're out and about, maybe you're in a park, maybe you're in a sports ground and you don't have a chair or bench, you can do it in standing. But in standing, I'll show you, you've again really got to be able to control your pelvis. So some of this is quite good for sports people because they're good at controlling their pelvis a lot of the time. But when you rotate, you can't shift your pelvis. It's about locking down your lumbar and moving, rotating your thoracic. So you can get in here and do the same sort of thing. Now, you've probably seen golfers on the golf course do this, where they do it this way. So you can see how I'm trying to keep my pelvis stable, but it's quite difficult in this position. And it's more of a learned behavior that I've got to work on. But if that's all you've got, maybe you're out on the golf course or you're doing something like that, that's the position you have to be in. You can always do it without the stick. And again, trying to keep this sort of stable locked in and just work on this movement, okay? And just, it's really simple, but you're trying to get to your in range. Okay, you're trying to use your arm swing as an overpressure to try and get more range, go past your sort of normal range. If you do it too slow, you sort of just stop. You need a bit of a swing, but be careful you don't go and overcook it and start straining yourself when you're trying to do a rehab mobility exercise. So that would be your progression up, okay? Sometimes what people can do is they also go into like a foundation type movement and try and do it that way, okay, where they're swinging. And you may find you being bent over like that 
because you're using your extensors to help stabilize your lumbar spine, you get less movement through your lumbar spine. So being in this sort of foundation, hip hinge, deadlift type position, imagine if you're doing a deadlift where your back's flat, having your spine in that position locks you down a bit, and then you can work on rotation like that. And you may find you get way more stability like that through your, th through your lumbar, and then you can work on your thoracic. So that's our sort of progression, if you like, of working on thoracic rotation mobility to loose you up and get some more range to that all important thoracic spine. Stay tuned for next time. We're gonna work on some extension. See you then.